thanks once again for the invitation. It's a real pleasure for me to be part of the Turkish AI Initiative Week. So really, really an honor to be here today. So in the coming minutes, I would really like to share with the audience uh, what has been my learning, what have been my experiences and, and at SAP of really embedding machine learning and artificial intelligence in our customers' organizations, in their business processes. And to analyze that from two perspectives, I think very aligned with the vision, with the theme of this week. And that is how embedded machine learning and AI really touches the lives of customers, of consumers, of citizens, but also how it's transforming organizations, how it's really helping in the move of digital transformation, as mentioned by, by the previous speaker. And what we've learned and the experiences I'm going to share are based on how we've supported thousands of SAP customers across industries, across uh, geographies, to really adopt what we call a strategy of becoming more intelligent, more networked, and more sustainable. The way we do that is, of course, by supporting them with intelligent end-to-end -end processes specific to their industries, be it oil and gas, retail, consumer, public sector. We'll mention some of those examples today. But also how we embed that end-to-end -end best practices across an organization, be it in finance, logistics, human resources, and all the areas across the organization. But, and what's really important for the focus today, is having an underlying digital platform, what we call the business technology platform, that allows these organizations to integrate data from any source, analyze it, bring in predictive analysis to really ensure that they can embed machine learning, AI, and then create their own applications. Business models really have an impact. So that is what we call the strategy of becoming more intelligent, networked and sustainable. But throughout this strategy and what I'll be explaining today is how we're learning the importance of embedding machine learning and AI. Why is that? Because what we're saying is these companies become these organizations more intelligent because now they can ingest data internal and external data, structured and unstructured data. It can be text, it can be images, it can be geolocations, it can be speech, it can be sounds, whatever data can be captured from the environment, from, from our organization, we can apply machine learning, we can apply advanced analytics to really identify risks and opportunities for the customer's business model to take action. And we'll talk about machine learning and AI when we then measure the outcome of the action to continuously improve. That's an intelligent company, gathers the data, takes action and learns from the action. An important thing in our strategy at SAP is that machine learning and AI is not a separate technology on the edge, something that belongs in the area of IT and data science. It must be embedded within the processes I described of industry and end-to-end -end best practices. And that has been our focus, to really integrate, embed artificial intelligence through hundreds of services that are throughout an organization. And each organization will decide how to activate, how to implement. And it's about these cases, this embedded machine learning and AI, I would like to focus on today, sharing experiences and what we have learned. So for example, I started saying that we can support with best practices across industries. Let me share some examples on how I'm seeing the impact of machine learning and AI across industries. Let's start maybe with the more complex industries. Those I would define as supporting really complex infrastructures, utilities, networks, critical infrastructures. For example, how we're supporting the Norwegian Public Roads Administration to manage and sensorize the bridges, the roads that they have to keep running, that they have to keep at top performance for their citizens. So we help this authority in first place to gather Internet of Things data from these sensorized bridges. This is the case of the Stabba bridge. We can now know in real time and in historic data how the bridge is performing, how its structural integrity, what are the vibrations, for example, if there's one track and two cars traveling over it. But this data is not only to know what's going on today, comparing it to what happened in the past. It feeds what we call a digital twin. 
a virtual representation of the asset that tells us how it will perform in the future. Let's think, for example, in six months time, depending on does it rain more than normal? Is it hotter than normal? Instead of one truck a day or one, an hour, we get 100 trucks because we're diverting traffic. And we can now understand how the bridge will perform in the future thanks to machine learning, predictive analysis, predictive maintenance. Why is this important? And this really hit me when I was seeing uh, uh, an article in, in the news some, some months ago. One of the engineers in charge of the maintenance of this bridge received an alert, not from the physical bridge today, but from the digital twin. That bridge in the future would be performing anonymously. There was something at risk. He decided to take his car to drive from his home to the bridge, inspect it visually. He wasn't comfortable. He cut the traffic with his own car, called the maintenance. And they confirmed, yes, there was a deficiency. There was a structural risk that needed to be addressed. So this kind of stories, and you can read the article, it's very interesting, show us that embedded machine learning and AI, for example, maintenance completely transform the role of insurance, of maintenance of these structures on really bringing more safety of providing better services. It doesn't have to be in complex infrastructures, uh, complex um, let's say networks, it can be also on individuals. For example, if we look at public sector, this is the case of a tax authority, the Office of State Revenue in Queensland, Australia. We help them analyze hundreds of millions of tax returns, of payments from the past, apply machine learning, and now this authority can predict months in advance if a citizen, if a company will have a problem paying their taxes. And they don't do this to maximize revenue to prevent fraud. They use it to help the citizens. Now they proactively reach out to a taxpayer, identify that, hey, you could have a problem paying your upcoming tax. Do you need social services? Do you need to defer payment to split it? Do you need a public loan? A tax authority that becomes almost a financial advisor, thanks to machine learning and proactive data analysis. And we don't need to go to Norway, we don't need to go to Australia. If we look, for example, at industries across Turkey, we're helping a leader in automotive manufacturing, in seats in this case for the automotive industry, Martur Fompak International out of Turkey. We help them leverage SAP technology to create what they describe as a metaverse factory. What does that mean? They have now created those digital twins, as in the case of the bridge, of 45 welding stations at one of their factories. They can now take that data with embedded machine learning, for example, for predictive maintenance, for example, for tracking sustainability, and take it to a virtual reality. Now, their engineers, even in the future, their customers, their stakeholders can enter that factory virtually, even see a future version of the factory if they now produce seats for another brand. How would that impact? What's exactly the, the carbon footprint by unique identifier? An intelligent machine learning enabled, much more sustainable manufacturing process with Martur Fompak. So many other cases I could share, but yes, industries are being completely transformed by having embedded machine learning and AI to bring more efficiency networks to bring in more sustainability. But it's not only in those industry specific scenarios, it can completely transform end to end processes across all lines of the business. For example, let's think in the area of finance, one of the first areas years ago we focused machine learning efforts in. The finance area, the treasury area has lots of manual repetitive tasks. For example, when you've got a large corporation with many companies and they need to do intercompany reconciliation. So there you've got currency issues, you've got interest rates, you've got different mismatches across geographies that could lead to not being able to do that reconciliation. So the system now learns from those finance experts and how they solve the issues. And in future, now we can automate that process and really cover the process of matching directly through machine learning and automation. This has helped, for example, customers like Dulla, the leader natural ingredients for food out of Germany, to leverage what we call smart cash. 
they can now match all the invoices they send to thousands of their customers with the notification on incoming payments from their bank. A very manual process of matching that can be done entirely through machine learning to do that matching. They have now released or increased 20% productivity so they can release those experts in finance to focus on other value added tasks. So finance clearly is an area that's strongly impacted. But throughout the whole organization, we've seen that transformation on efficiency, on sustainability. Let's think, for example, on the intelligent spend machine learning service. What does that allow an organization? It allows the organization to track all their spend all the contracts, the volume of those contracts with what suppliers they're running those contracts and to apply machine learning to get continuous recommendations. You should be in future grouping these contracts under this supplier or you'd get a better offer if you take out this different purchasing and move it to this other area. Where are the opportunities to constantly become more efficient by learning from this data? And a key area nowadays is how do we retain talent? How do we really support our teams? So in the human experience arena, we've helped companies like Telefonica, the leading telco in, in, in Spain, who needed to address the reskilling of over 100,000 employees to move into more digital uh, products, more digital uh, business models. So we supported them by generating an app that uses machine learning to identify, well, what is the career path of this individual? But also, how do they learn? What are the training opportunities available? So that be face-to-face -face training, would they benefit more by remote training or on-the-job training? And get personalized, targeted recommendation to each one of those individuals. Highly efficient to really reskill huge numbers of employees, like the case of, of Telefonica. So, absolutely, yes. Embedded machine learning, embedded AI also transforms all the lines of business in an organization, finance, efficiency, sustainability, supply chain, human resources. The third area I wanted to share is how this technology, how embedded machine learning and AI also touches our day-to-day -day lives as customers, as consumers, as citizens. And we have seen, for example, that through machine learning and AI, we can support brands, we can support, for example, retailers to understand much better their customers, their consumers. For example, through what we call experience management. Can we now analyze natural language, text, uh, experiences in real time? How is our customer feeling at the store? Are they missing a product? Are they concerned with something? What that allows us then is not only to respond immediately, provide a better service as we're doing with many retailers, but I think very important to understand what is the purpose that customer, that consumer is looking for. What are the goals they want through purchasing our products? And this is, for example, how we help Co-op, uh, the leading retailer in, in Switzerland, to use machine learning, to use advanced analytics to plan the best campaigns and promotions in their stores. For example, to make sure they had the right products that their customers wanted when entering a store. But at the same time, they realized that customers were very concerned about sustainability. They were very concerned about food going to waste. So we helped them by developing intelligent replenishment planning with machine learning embedded to take into account, yes, what's the prediction of purchase, of demand, but also take into account the expiry date of these fresh products to ensure to customers, yes, you'll have the right tomatoes, the right beans, and also none of this product will go to waste due to this campaign because we're managing exactly what's in stock to what is the demand. So you've understood the purpose, you use machine learning to really respond to that expectation. And again, we don't need to go far, we don't need to go to Switzerland to learn about these applications. If we look in the case of Flo, understand the leader in, in, in shoe uh, retail in, in Turkey and how they could identify that they weren't providing their customers the best of experience when managing the return of products. Thousands of products being returned that need to be reviewed, that need to be confirmed. Yes, there was a defect and uh, move forward with that customer. That could be a very slow and manual process. 
So we have helped them leverage machine learning to take into account data around the customer, around the date, uh, the timing of that return, take into account data about the manufacturer, have there been previous issues. And now instead of taking maybe 10 days to provide a response, they can do that in real time. They can automate with accuracy of up to 60% that analysis of data to confirm, yes, this is a proper return, we need to take action. By doing this, they have reduced 50% on the cost of the process, increased by 80% the customer satisfaction in that step. Understand the problem, apply machine learning and automation, resolve and improve your customer's experience. And it can be not only to understand what's the purpose, where can we improve experience, but when we can embed this intelligence, we go a step further. As I was saying, can we really understand the purpose that a customer, a consumer is looking in our, for in our products and brands. This is how we help through our marketing solutions, Adidas, and their Rantastic platform. Now millions of their athletes, of their customers, share through their application, what are their goals? Why are they going to the gym? Why are they going out for a run? Is it to lose weight? Is it to run a race? Is it to achieve a specific goal? And once they know that target, we can help them analyze constantly 200 data points from each one of those customers and now send them 8 million personalized messages a month to that customer with the recommendations on how to achieve that goal. You've understood the purpose. You can analyze the right data. You can apply the intelligence to really become a trusted advisor in sport, in finance, in whatever industry you're operating in. Provide the best experience. And it can be much closer to us. Let's think of our own homes. If we think about utilities, energy, the comfort in our homes, we can now work, for example, with our partner Net2Grid. Net2Grid offers a machine learning enabled service that takes the data from the smart meters of that customer's home. What does that allow us? We can now apply machine learning on the electricity, the energy being used. And with net to grid we can identify what is that household using the energy for? Are they cooking? Are they using air conditioning? Are they using heating? Are they charging an electric vehicle? Apply now the intelligence to become a trusted advisor like Adidas was doing, but in this case, to become a trusted advisor to help the household use energy properly and, for example, not go over their budget, not have a bill shock provide them recommendations on the best moment and products to charge their electric vehicle. When should they be turning off their heating or turning off their, their air conditioning? You become a trusted advisor, which you know the goal, you have the data, you have the intelligence to react massively to each customer. So many areas, as I described, and many more cases where machine learning and AI is transforming industry-specific requirements and challenges end-to-end -end processes and really touching the lives of your customers, your consumers, your citizens. But usually at this point, and I think very relevant for, for these sessions for this week is, okay, the technology works, the technology is there, but many executives ask me, where do I start? Where should I focus? And my recommendation is first to analyze your own processes, your products, your service. We call that business process intelligence. And this allows us to analyze processes throughout an organization, understand where we've got bottlenecks, challenges, or best practices, and to combine this with the experience you're giving your customers. Internal, your own employees, your suppliers, it can be your end customers, consumers, citizens, understand the experience you're giving them and focus there will really have an impact. So, for example, mentioned a few cases of online retail or, or services. Can we now create what we call the customer journey? Can I now understand all the steps a customer has with a retailer? Can I know what's the experience they're getting, the net promoter score? Why are they unsatisfied maybe in the delivery? That should be happening in three days. It's happening in three days, 21 hours, or in the time it takes to process a return. That's where we will focus. We know there's an issue there. Now we can deep dive and understand the problem is maybe the last mile delivery. It's a third party that's not delivering on time. Now we've pinpointed where we need the intelligence, the automation, the robotics to really address a challenge. That's my recommendation. 
focus where you have the maximum impact. What can we do then? Because we need to act quickly. And the recommendation here is not to go into complex projects. Leverage really the capacity of low code, no code automation to quickly respond, get a minimal workable product out there to test the impact on your customers. This is what we propose through intelligent robotic process automation. Capture the process, automate it, get one of those hundreds of machine learning and services, be it natural language processing, conversational AI, and quickly create that application, that service. Combine that with low code, no code capabilities, and it's directly maybe your marketing team, your finance team that can very quickly create the app, leveraging the automation, leveraging the machine learning. Really take a quick action to solve that issue. And I'll close out with an experience in my own organization at SAP. When I was talking with our own contracts and finance team on how they were using this approach to really respond to their internal customer needs. So they did process mining. They analyzed really what was the use and experience their internal customers were having on their services. And although they saw the data is there, the dashboards are there, all the information is there. They realize that end users prefer to pick up the phone and talk with contracts, talk with finance to get the final confirmation, a real burden on that team. So it was that team directly that could very quickly use natural language process as a service to extract the information from a contract, from an accounting uh, posting, for example. They could use robotics, to automate the response and conversational AI to embed that through low code, no code into an app that today is being used by thousands of internal users to maintain the same conversation, to get the details on contracts and finance. So identify your process, identify where you can improve or create a new experience or need to solve a possible issue and then very quickly react by using machine learning, AI, automation and bringing it all together. So that's a bit some of the experiences I wanted to share. That's a bit the recommendations we wanted to provide from SAP. And once again, thank you so much for the invitation to be here today. It's really been a pleasure. And hopefully I could share with you some interesting cases. Thank you very much.